I'm Thomas, and these are the top five most frequently asked questions about CO2 scrubbers. Number one, how effective are CO2 scrubbers? CO2 scrubbers can be quite effective at raising the pH in your reef tank by removing the excess CO2 from the air before it makes it into your reef and starts to lower the pH. This can often increase the pH in the aquarium by 0.2 to 0.4, which can make a huge difference for those who have a pH that's chronically hovering around 7.8 to 7.9, getting their reef up to that optimal coral calcification zone of 8.2 to 8.3. Many reefers have been using them successfully for years now, and they're becoming more and more popular, leading to more and more dedicated options becoming available from various manufacturers because they do work so well. I've been using one for the last couple of years now with great results, and I do generally recommend them to reefers who have low pH issues. Number two, do I need a CO2 scrubber? Whether or not you need a CO2 scrubber is gonna depend entirely on the trend of the pH in your reef tank and the CO2 level in your home. Ultimately, you always want your pH to be above 8.0 and ideally somewhere between 8.2 and 8.3. Because most homes are well insulated and don't get a lot of fresh air from outside, CO2 has a habit of building up in the air from you and your family and even your land-loving pets just breathing. That excess CO2 in the air will get into your aquarium water and lower the pH. The pH in your tank will typically be the highest during the day while the lights are on and your corals are photosynthesizing, which uses up some of that excess CO2 in the water, and the lowest at night when the lights are off and the CO2 is able to build up again. If your reef tends to hover somewhere between 7.8 and 7.9 during the evenings and only ever gets above 7.9 during the day, a CO2 scrubber can be an excellent option for bumping that pH up to where it should be. Number three, how does a CO2 scrubber work? By placing a CO2 scrubber in line with your protein skimmer's air intake so that the air has to pass through that CO2 scrubbing media before it enters the skimmer, you can effectively remove a lot of that excess CO2 before it makes it into your tank in the first place, preventing a buildup of excess CO2 in the water that would otherwise cause the pH to drop. The media itself is largely made from calcium hydroxide in a pelleted form, and as the air passes over it, CO2 from the air bonds to it and stops it from passing through to your protein skimmer where it would get mixed into the water. Number four, what is a recirculating CO2 scrubber? A recirculating CO2 scrubber is essentially a way of setting up a CO2 scrubber so that rather than pulling air from the room, it actually pulls air from within the skimmer cup and body. This can help extend the life of the CO2 media since you'll be recirculating that already scrubbed air that should have much less CO2 than the air in the room. While this does usually take some amount of DIY skill to set up, there are now options available like this one from Reef Octopus that makes setting up a recirculating scrubber super easy by giving you a specialized lid to swap out on the skimmer. The media also works quite a bit better with humid air, so a recirculating CO2 scrubber can also do a better job of raising the pH. Number five, how long does the media last? That's a great question, and how long the media is going to last depends on a few different factors. Factors like how much CO2 is in the air, or how humid the air is, or the airflow rate of the protein skimmer. On average, reefers are going to get somewhere between three to four weeks of use out of their media before it needs to be changed. That being said, I routinely get somewhere between six to eight weeks out of my CO2 scrubbing media. Despite the fact that it's not easy to predict exactly how long it's gonna last for everyone, it is very easy to tell when it needs to be changed because the media actually changes color as it becomes exhausted. When it's new, it's going to be white, and as it absorbs CO2, it changes to a purplish pink color. I usually change mine out just before it's completely pink just to make sure it's always performing consistently. Now with that said, before you set up your first CO2 scrubber, there are some really common mistakes that people make that can ultimately change how effective they are. You can easily avoid them though and make sure you're getting all of the pH pumping power possible by watching this video right here where we show you how to avoid them. Check it out.